Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about how to create scripts that interact with OpenAI using PowerShell. Now there's a lot of information out there on how to accomplish this using Python, but some of you may be PowerShell people like myself and I do a lot of scripting so I figured this would be a great opportunity to show how to do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is the requirements to do this. Um, in order to do this, you are going to need an API key. You get that API key by creating an account with openai.com. It's going to be https colon backslash backslash beta dot openai.com. Once you're there, you're going to have to sign up for a plan. Now they charge based on um, I, I think they call it like tokens or whatever the case is. This is different from the API token, but they break down words into, into a certain amount of tokens that then the AI processes. So what I found is that this is really, really cheap. I mean, even in all of my testing, and I mean over all of my testing, over the course of maybe a year or so, I think I've barely even racked up maybe $20.00. Um, and, and expenses. So, I mean, it's super duper cheap. Uh, and last but not least, and this is free, you will need your PowerShell ISE, which comes with any version of Windows. Boom. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. Oh, yeah, before I move this back over, we're going to talk about the steps as well. Um, first, we're going to create our API header. Uh, we're going to gather inputs, which are going to be what you want to send over to OpenAI. And then we may want to do a confirmation on that. So we're going to validate our input. We're going to submit those inputs to the API. And then we're going to output any return data. Okay. So this is pretty simple. We're not going to dive too deeply into this and do it, do a bunch of uh, things that are unnecessary. We're just going to dive in and get to work. So let's get started. All right. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and pull up our PowerShell ISE. Uh, if you need to find yours, you can easily do it by going to your start menu. You type in PowerShell and you're going to get the icon that looks like this one up at the top. It's going to say PowerShell internal scripting engine. And as I mentioned before, that comes with any version of Windows. Um, so long as you're not running a server version that is just running core where you have no user interface at all. Uh, I don't know if it's on there or not, but it's definitely here. And um, as I mentioned before, you are going to need your API key. In this case, I've got my API key on here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start to build the script out. Uh, so like I said, first thing. Let's go ahead and let's dive in. Let's get our API key. In my case, I have my API key in a file. And um, that file is there so that I'm not posting my API token um, to the internet, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to say gather API token. And all right, let's go on down to our next line. I'm going to use something called get content for mine, uh, but just keep in mind. So really all you have to do is just say token, dollar sign token. This is going to create our space to load something into. In this case, we're going to have a string. And that string is going to be our API token. Uh, you know, you could do something in parentheses, I mean, in quotations like blah, blah, blah. But and you can put your token right here. Me. I'm going to grab it from a file. So if you look closely at file structure here, I really just have two things here. Um, I have something, a text file that's called key and key one. I'll use key one as an example, just so you can see how this looks. So if I type in get content and I'm going to type in key one, press enter. What you're going to see is a line of text here. Now, this is not my token, but this gives you an example of how you can place data in a text file and you can retrieve that data later in a script. So that's what we're going to do in this case. 
we're going to take the output of get data and we're going to store that in our token all right now the next thing we're going to have to do is to turn this into a bearer token and that's a that's a little bit funny because for one reason or another the way the apis are created sometimes you have to have a bearer token and all the bearer token is is it's going to have the word bearer appended just before so all right i'm going to go ahead create bearer token all right and to do this all we're really going to do is append the word bearer to the front of our token above so i'm going to say bearer token and then equals we're going to use our open and close parentheses because we're going to add two different strings together or append them together I'm going to say the word bearer at a space plus our token. Okay. And this is going to give us bearer space, the data that we get from the file. Super simple. All right. So next we go back up here to our scripting area and we're going to go ahead and add a few more lines here. Uh, firstly, we're going to go ahead and generate our header. And in this case, I'm going to call it header. So dollar sign header equals. This is going to be an index. So we're going to at sign curly bracket. Go down a few lines, close curly bracket. In here, we're going to have two pieces of data. We're going to have an authorization piece of data which equals our bearer token so I'm gonna put dollar sign bearer token there then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna to need to include our content type now this is um, something that you have to do oftentimes with API's just to tell it what type of data you're gonna be presenting to it in this case we're gonna be presenting it with application JSON so this is application slash JSON data all right so that's pretty much going to be our header when you look at it if we were to run this and then look at our header it looks like this so it looks like a, a nice um, sort of table of information here now there's nothing under authorization because I didn't run the command to generate our bearer token yet but you can just get an idea of how how it is we have key value pairs one is content type that's the value of it authorization is here and then we would have our bearer token as well um, that's gonna fill out later so next thing we have to do we have our header that's checked we have our API token here that's checked as well so we're gonna move down and we're gonna go to the point where we would typically start to put information in um, this is gonna be a loop so first thing we're gonna do here is create it's gonna be a, a, a variable here is gonna be something that enables us to stay inside of a loop for just as long as we need to we're just gonna call it run so run equals dollar sign true so it's a boolean variable and that means that it's either going to be true or false and i'm just going to add up here okay so we create run and then we're going to say while run is true or in this case since we're using PowerShell we can just say while run dollar sign run we're going to do something within these brackets okay so here we go this is our main loop and basically if you think about what we're trying to do here we may want to use this script multiple times right so why have to keep executing the script over and over again when we can just create a loop that keeps prompting us for more and more information, right? That's why we create this loop. And as soon as we're done, 
then we can press something and it'll escape the loop and then the script will be finished. So next thing here we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in a few additional variables. These all need to be initialized at the very beginning. I'm gonna go ahead for the sake of time and copy these in. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we have our variables and we wanna make sure that everything is reinitialized each time we go through this loop. So request type, the prompt. Um, we have one here that's called good. I'll show you how that plays in later. That's part of our input validation. These two are both input validation. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and we're gonna create like a user interface in the command line interface, um, or rather just, just a quick menu. It's gonna be a text menu. So we're just gonna say create. Create an issue menu. And on here, first we're gonna clear the screen. So we can just type in clear and that'll automatically clear the screen. Just like if we go down here and we type in CLS, short for clear, look, we have a clear screen. That's what this is gonna do. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and start to write this out. So we're gonna do that by typing in write host. Write host is nice, but it only goes to the console. Uh, but there's some nice things you can do in here. We can give it a foreground color, for example. We can make all of this yellow. It makes it stick out a little bit more. Up here, we're gonna say, please choose an option below. All right, so we're gonna have multiple lines like this. All right, I'm gonna take this line and I'm gonna copy it a few times. We're only really gonna have two options. So I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna make this an equal sign. It's kinda of like a little uh, divider and we're gonna have our first option which is text completion. Now in OpenAI, you have different APIs that you can use. Um, one uses DaVinci, or at least currently is DaVinci. I mean, of course, they're always making updates. Uh, and that was the OG AI. You could send over requests and things to it, and it would give you information back. Um, this was before ChatGPT and uh, how it can, you know, pretty much operate as if it's a person, at least via text. All right. So first, we have our text completion, and secondly, we're just gonna do quit. We'll add additional features later, but for right now, this is, this is all we're gonna do. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and, oops, I'm gonna copy this line one more time. So when we run these, we're gonna have something that looks like this, right? Choose an option below, number one, number two, okay? Then we have a divider, and that's it. So after that point, we're gonna have to have a point where we go ahead and we read what the person wants. Now, when we read what the person wants, we're gonna have to use read host. So first we're gonna say request type. If you look up above, this is one of our variables up here, which we set to null each time. So now we're gonna say request type equals read host. So instead of writing to the host, we're gonna read now, we're gonna take input. And our prompt is gonna be, okay, please enter your choice. which is really gonna be either one or two in this case. One or two, okay? Now, once we do this, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next step. We're gonna create an if statement because based on whatever the person selects up here, we're gonna do one of two things. Either we're gonna quit or we're going to go ahead and execute our text completion. All right, 
using uh, OpenAI. So I'm going to go ahead and do an if statement here. All right. And we're going to say if request type equals dash equals one, then we're going to execute what's in this block. All right. Now, in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to ask for additional input because you want to do a text completion. That text completion could be anything from what's two plus two to, hey, what are the 50 states in the United States sorted by population? All right. Da Vinci is pretty powerful. All right. We're going to go ahead and create our prompt. And actually, we need to create another loop here because we're going to have to validate what the person says so we're going to create another while loop and if you look up top here we say valid is false so we're going to assume that what the person puts in is false at the beginning and we're going to ask them to verify before we go ahead and submit this to the api as i mentioned the api is a paid thing so you know, heck, it helps to uh, make sure that you're only submitting over information that you meant to send over. So we're going to say while. Now, since this is Boolean, we could say something like while dollar sign valid. And what that would do is say that if valid is true, then do what's in this block. Uh, but what we're going to say is while it's false. OK, because as I mentioned before, we assumed that it's false up top. All right. So while it's false, we're going to prompt the person for their request. All right. I'm just going to copy and paste this just for the sake of time. All right. So what is your question or request? right you type it in then we're going to ask are you sure that this is right and we're going to echo what they wrote back to them all right so good is just another way of determining okay is this good yes or no that's going to be stored that y or that n is going to be stored in good so if we look up here type your question or request okay is this right yes or no that goes into good. Now we have a decision to make. Pretty simple decision. If the answer is Y or if it equals Y, then we're going to break out of this loop. All right, because we're going to say that valid is now true. And up here, our loop is only going to keep going while valid is false. OK. So it would take the person back through and it would ask them the question again. So that's our way of validating the input. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a body. So I'm going to go ahead and do dollar sign body. This is going to be very similar to the header up top. At sign, curly brackets. So Next, we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of information in here. We're going to give it our model. Uh, remember, I spoke about DaVinci. DaVinci 3 is the current model. Of course, I'm sure people in the future will look back at this and, and sort of laugh. I almost forgot my equal sign. All right, last but not least, we're going to go ahead and include the person's prompt. So we're going to say prompt equals and remember we have the prompt from up here that the person gave you there we go so we have the model and we have the prompt next we're going to go ahead and do our api call so first we're going to write in green that we're sending the request it doesn't have to be green but it's just something nice to do and then we're going to actually go ahead and invoke our rest method. Now, if you need to know 
where any of this information is as far as where you get the URI from or any of that I'll put that in, in the description uh, but that's all under um, beta.openai.com uh, under the documentation so in this case what we're essentially doing is we're taking the data from this API call which we're invoking rest method it's going to be a post we're going to the completions URI we're going to include our header which gives us our bearer token and everything so it knows who we are then we're going to take the body and we're going to take that body and we're going to convert it to JSON because if you remember in the header we said that the data that we're providing is application JSON so if we come down here we convert our body to JSON okay so we take our prompt we submit it over and it's going to give us something back and we're taking that as data we're going to have to parse that all right now once this is done because it can take a moment we'll go ahead and we'll put down that the request completed there's a chance it could fail um, and for the purposes of this script I'm not going to put in any sort of error handling or anything like that that would be something that you could put in yourself but you would do uh, you would tell it to try and then if it fails then you could um, tell it to do something else but in this case you know for this one it should go through as as long as you're providing the correct model as long as you have a good API token shouldn't be any problems like I said we're posting here it's gonna give us something back in the form of data okay so we're gonna take this data we're gonna call it output and what we're gonna have to do is massage this information that came back a little bit since it's in a JSON body we're gonna have to go through a few fields and sort of strip it down so we're gonna take it we're gonna start at data underneath that we're gonna have choices because it it gives us back a list of possible replies by default though it's one and that's all we want is just one all right underneath that we go to text what I found out is for one reason or another typically the output starts off with a few returns at the very beginning and I don't want that so what I'm gonna also do is trim here and what this is going to do is at the very beginning of the string that it replies back we're gonna trim any any preceding returns okay because we don't want that all right last but not least we're gonna go ahead and put this output on the screen so that you or whoever can see it right so we're gonna call this output one and what we're gonna do is take our prompt first and we're gonna say prompt which is what we or the other person typed in and we're gonna say dollar sign prompt and this is gonna give us a readout with a colon of what was first sent to the API next I'm gonna put in tilde in and this is a special character uh, which basically allows for it, PowerShell reads it as a return so and hold on yeah that's the right one so it's sort of tilde in and it looks at that as a return all right so next we're going to take the same one here which is dollars on output one and we're going to say plus equals this time and we're going to say output which is what the API gave us back and we're going to go ahead and put in our output from above dollar sign output and that's it last but not least we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna write this out and it's gonna go on the screen so 
so this is good. Now we're going to go ahead and put down our second condition. Remember, we have two different options. One is text completion, one is quit. All right, so we're going to go down and put in our second one here, which is else if. Oops, open and close parentheses. So we're going to say else if up above request type instead of equaling one, if it equals two, we're going to keep this very short and sweet. Firstly, we're going to go ahead and break the loop. Remember, run is what keeps us in this while loop. So if we no longer want to run this script, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to say run equals dollar sign false. And we're going to go ahead and do a write host. And we're just going to say ending script. And that's really all we have to put here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and this is finished. We, we've set this up. 61 lines of code really it's less than that because we have some additional returns in here so we can go ahead and execute this give me a moment and we'll go ahead and do our execution okay so on second thought here we still need to make just three more changes um the first change that we need to make is if you notice here based on our logic We've got, all right, so we, we initialize our variables up top. We clear the screen. This is important. Now, this is going to keep our screen looking relatively, uh, you know, clear of additional information. But here's the problem. As it currently stands, we do our API call. We parse our data to get what the output was, and then we package our prompt and our output into one entry and then we go ahead and we write that to the to the console down here now the problem lies in once this is completed the loop would go back up to the top and then the first thing that it does is clear the screen again if we leave it as it currently is then we wouldn't be able to see the output because we would get the output and then it would immediately clear the screen so to circumvent this what or to resolve this issue what we need to do is go ahead and just type pause after our statements and the pause is going to make it so that we have a little bit of a break here it's going to force us to press enter to move along and that's good you can see your output you can see your input if needed you can maybe copy and paste it out and then you can press enter and then it's going to take us back up to the top and it's going to clear the screen and give us the menu again Okay, the next thing we need to do for longer replies, we need to also add into our body max underscore tokens. Uh, we're going to set this for 4,000. The, the more recent models allow you to do this. So DaVinci 3, it supports 4,000 tokens. Um, the GPT models as well, um, some of them support far more than 4,000 tokens. But in this case, uh, like I said, what this is going to allow us to do is to generate longer outputs, okay? Um, and last but not least, up here for content type, we need to make sure that we put a capital C and a capital T in content type because this is case sensitive. Um, I didn't think that at first, but I kind of I kind of had to remember this. But yeah, if you have this off, uh, this authorization make sure you have these the right case if you don't then your API calls may fail that being said let's go ahead and let's get into the demonstration here I'm gonna go ahead and press on the play button and so you can see uh, we've made it all the way down to our menu so that means that we have our our token we turned that API token into a bearer token we went ahead and generated our header which is our bearer token and we also have our content type that's very important and we initialized our variables and we're down here to our menu and it's prompting us as to what we want to do 
In this case, we're going to do a text completion. Press 1. Now it's going to ask us what our question is that we want to submit to the API. For this first question, we're going to do something very simple. We're just going to say, what is 2, two plus 2? Question mark. Next, we have our validation. And we want to make sure that before submitting this to the API that we don't have any any mistypes or anything like that. So you can say, you can see where it says, is this correct? And then it gives us in quotations what we typed in. And so if you say no, then it's going to take you back up and you have to retype it. But if we're good, we press Y for yes. And I'm, that's what I'm going to do is press Y. Okay. So you can see that we moved down, we generated our body, and then we got the message sending request. And then we did our API call. And then we get re request completed. And then we have our output down below. So we can see we typed in what is two plus two question mark. And DaVinci three replied two plus two equals four. So that's very cool. Gonna go ahead and press enter. And as you can see now, we're back up to our menu. So let's ask for something a little bit more complex now. I'm going to say one again. And this time we're going to say generate a list of all 50 states, all 50 US states. Sorted by population. population. Okay. Is this what we want to send? I'm going to press Y again. Generate a list of all 50 US states sorted by population. Now it's sending requests, but you can tell this is taking a little bit longer. This is why we needed to have this max 4,000 tokens. Um, you can you can get longer responses here and it may take it a little while to come back, but it'll, all right, there we go. So see this one went ahead and it came back. Let's scroll back up. So we have our, we have our re request completed. Let me expand this area a little bit and we see our prompt, which is what we typed in. And then it starts off with California. So California, Texas, Florida, New York, and it goes all the way down until we hit number 50. Okay. Now it's important to note that the AI models, at least as it currently stands, are not completely up to date. So if I press enter and you can see, we get a little bit of a strange little glitch here. This is just a scripting engine where it for one reason or another, the first two characters of the lines are white, but the rest are yellow. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that. That's a, that's a UI glitch. Um, but just to prove the point about how, how up to date this data is, we're going to do a basic question. What is today's date? Question mark. Today's date question mark all right now what you're going to notice here is that as of today i'm making this video on april 22nd 2023 but it currently thinks that the date is october 2nd 2020 the sample data that was submitted to uh da vinci is not completely up to date uh, I think it ends in 2021 or at the very end of 2020. So that being said, you have to keep in mind that any answers it generates are going to have that context behind it. It's not going to be completely up to date and it's not going to know about anything that's prior to that time. That's very important to note. But otherwise, as you can see, it still runs as intended and we can call this a success. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is in a following video, we're going to add additional functionality so that we can do a chat GPT conversation using a PowerShell script.
and we'll just add that as an additional option. So we'll have number one, text completion, uh, number two, chat GPT, and then number three to quit. And, you know, I hope that you all enjoy this. This, uh, you know, is one of those cool things. Um, scripting is always free. Now, although an open AI account is not free, it, like I said, is, is really, really cheap. I mean, I, I don't think I've racked up even more than, you know, $20 in all the time that I've been using it and I've been testing it a lot. Uh, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and call this a success. I'm going to press number two. It says ending script. I'm going to press enter and boom, there we go. We're finished. We're out of our script and we were able to successfully perform API calls back to OpenAI and ask it questions and it gave us a response back. So this is really cool. Um, I hope you all had a good time and we'll work on another one very soon.